There has been a lot of talk about AI creeping into Blender and 3D in general. Some people love the idea, less time spent on boring technical stuff and more time for creative work, and others aren't so sure about that, arguing that AI generated results can be rough, need a lot of fixing, and might even take away important skills that artists should be learning. What I didn't expect was that, at the Blender's roadmap presentation, which was a couple of months ago, Francisco City touched on AI's role, mentioning that, while there is a lot of hype around it, the real goal should be to use AI where it makes sense, hinting of course to the possibility of using it within Blender. He pointed out that Blender has already AI-powered features, like Open Image Denoiser, and the possibility that AI could eventually be useful for things like video denoising, object masking, and even assisting with Python scripting inside Blender. So is AI actually helpful in Blender, or is it just a problem that we should avoid? But before we continue, I want to let you guys know that the Blender market is going over a huge winter sale right now, with 25% off thousands of products from add-ons, modifier setups, courses, and more. And by the way, if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best Blender add-ons out there. Without further ado, let's jump right in. First of all, AI in Blender isn't some futuristic one-click button to get a perfect render kind of deal. It's mostly gonna be there to speed up repetitive tasks. One of the best known AI features in Blender is denoising. So instead of waiting forever for a clean render, AI smooths out the noise automatically. It is not magic as I said before, but it does save some time. And when it comes to tedious tasks such as UV mapping and texture generation, AI can assist by giving you a rough starting point, and these tools can make things a little bit faster, though they often need manual tweaking to get things right. And here's the thing, there has been some talk going around about AI-powered coding assistance, tools that can help you with Python scripting or suggest fixes for node setups. This can actually be helpful, especially for those who don't want to spend hours digging through forum posts, and in fact, there are already AI-powered add-ons in Blender that attempt to do this. Some assist with Python scripting by generating code snippets based on prompts, while others help automate node-based workflows by suggesting node setups for specific tasks. But the fact still remains, which is that AI-generated solutions aren't always reliable and small mistakes can lead to bigger problems later. At the end of the day, AI in Blender isn't here to replace anyone or anything really. And this is my opinion, it is just trying to make things a little bit less tedious. Now, the real question is whether it actually helps or is it just trying to do things another way. From what I can see, the biggest advantage of AI in Blender is efficiency. Certain tasks like denoising, basic UV mapping, or even some texture generation don't require much creative input but can eat up a lot of time. And AI can help speed things up, making workflows smoother and reducing the need for manual adjustments in areas that are more technical than artistic. Take denoising for example. If you have ever sat there watching cycles resolve pixels one by one, you know how painfully long renders can be. An AI Unosian helps cut that time down by smoothing out noise in the image without needing extra render samples. Generally, Blender offers three denoising models, each suited for different needs, and these are Optics, Open Image Denoise, and NLM, non-local means. Optics developed by NVIDIA is AI-powered and works best on RTX GPUs. Basically, it uses deep learning to produce sharp and detailed results with minimal artifacts, making it one of the fastest and most efficient denoisers available. An open image denoise from Intel runs entirely on the CPU, and it is known for preserving fine details, making it a great option for complex textures and high-frequency details. NLM, on the other hand, is Blender's traditional non-AI denoiser. It works on any hardware, but it can sometimes blur details. At the same time, it is not as fast or as effective as the other two options, and choosing the right denoiser actually depends on the hardware being used and the level of detail required in the final render. Beyond rendering, AI has the potential to assist with other technical challenges inside Blender, particularly for beginners. Stuff like retopology, weight painting, 
and shader setups can be overwhelming at first, often requiring trial and error to get things to look right, and even for professionals to be honest, because who doesn't want to spend less time on these tasks? So AI-driven tools could help automate some of these initial steps, allowing new users and even professionals to focus on the creative aspects rather than getting stuck with the technical roadblocks. That said, AI-generated results are gonna come with flaws. UV mapping, for example, is an area where AI can provide a starting point but often requires manual refinement. I tested an AI-assisted UV mapping tool once and it gave me a rough layout that can save time, but I still had to go back and forth to clean things up. It is better than doing everything manually, but far from perfect. Think of it like a draft that still needs some fixing. Kind of like one sculpting in Blender for the first time. The same applies to AI-powered tools for coding and automation. In addition to debugging scripts, troubleshooting shaders, or setting up nodes, which might be a little bit easier with AI-assisted suggestions, especially for those who aren't experienced with Python or Blender's more complex workflows. However, AI doesn't understand the full context of a project, meaning human judgment is still needed to ensure things work as intended. While AI can help speed up certain tasks, it is not a replacement for learning the core skills. It is just a tool that can work best when combined with a solid understanding of Blender's fundamentals. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.